Navigating the ever-evolving gaming world can be challenging, so let's explore together. First, let's dive into the PS5 Slim. Contrary to its name, the PS5 Slim isn't as petite as we had hoped. My research suggests that while it might not live up to its Slim moniker in terms of size, it will, however, ditch the disk drive, something we've been hearing whispers about for a while. Curious about its specs, here they are. For those who already own a PS5, there's little reason to jump ship to the Slim, unless, of course, you're frequently on the move or like gaming at a friend's place. But for those still on the fence about getting a PS5, the decision becomes more interesting. While the allure of the PS5 Pro is undeniable and its merits many, let's not forget the incredible value the standard PS5 offers. If you're itching to get your hands on a PS5, here's a piece of advice. If you come across a can't-miss deal, whether for the console alone or bundled with some tantalizing games, it might be worth taking the plunge. Otherwise, patience might serve you well. Give it a month or two. If there's no word on the Slim by mid-October, I'd recommend going for the standard PS5. That's my two cents on the Slim versus standard debate. Before I share my thoughts, it's important to shine a spotlight on the community's voices. I'm fortunate to have a platform blessed with insightful viewers who leave thoughtful comments, serving as a valuable pulse check on gamers' sentiments. There's no need for me to scour Reddit or other forums, our own community provides rich insights. Here are a few highlights. Tenno Swords. I hate pros because they seem to penalize early adopters who aren't in a position to buy multiple consoles. The silver lining is that this could extend the generation's life. But I'm skeptical about the six-year cycle. We didn't witness a significant generational leap this time around. It's a concern if we can't even achieve consistent 4K 60fps with the base model. As we go forward, justifying new consoles on such a cycle might be a tough sell. My response? I get the frustrations. If you splurge on a PS5 in 2020 and then the Pro drops in November 2024, that's a four-year gap. But imagine buying the PS5 in July 2024 only to see the Pro launch three months later. That's bound to sting. My take? If I'm really gunning for the Pro, I'd auction my PS5 on eBay, toss in an extra $100, and voila. I'm the proud owner of a PS5 Pro, what do you think? Another key sentiment echoing in the community is the idea that there shouldn't be a Pro model at all. Instead, some gamers believe there should be a singular, definitive edition. It's a valid point. After all, consistency can bring simplicity. But here's the reality we must grapple with. Technology is a rapidly advancing beast. Look at tech giants like Samsung and Apple. They roll out new phone models almost biannually. It's relentless, but it's also indicative of the tech world's pace. And here's a tidbit to chew on. The standard PS5, the one many of us know and love, has undergone revisions at least twice since its debut. Compare the motherboards from the launch year model to this year's, and you'll find the latter sleeker. Even the cooling system has been refined for better efficiency. If you're gearing up to snag a standard edition PS5, here's my advice, always check the production date before buying. If you're going the online route, don't hesitate to ask the seller for the exact serial number in advance. This little step can make a big difference in ensuring you get the most up-to-date model. Alright folks, let's stay on track and dive into more of your thoughts. Here's a noteworthy comment from at Phantom7531. Sony needs to drop the 8K fixation and double down on 4K. Better ray tracing, smoother performance at 60 FPS or more, and increased storage. The whole 8K buzz, it's overkill. Not many even have 8K TVs due to their steep price. And the leap from 4K to 8K, it's not as noticeable as the shift from 1080p or 1440p to 4K. You'd barely spot the difference unless someone pointed out it's 8K. Give me enhanced ray tracing and higher FPS over this 8K talk any day. Maybe save the 8K for the PS6, just my two cents. Also, it'd be great to see more game-themed plates and matching controllers, similar to what's up with the Spider-Man bundle. I've heard loads of folks wanting the same, so here's hoping Sony listens. Absolutely, at Phantom7531, I'm with you on this. The push for 8K seems a bit ahead of its time, especially when the majority of gamers are still immersed in the rich visuals of 4K. The difference between 8K and 4K is subtle to the human eye and the true gaming magic lies in aspects like ray tracing, smooth frame rates, and enhanced gameplay experience. Moreover, themed plates and matching controllers are a great idea they add a personal touch to our consoles. Here's hoping Sony pays heed to what the community really wants. Thanks for sharing your insights. Alright everyone the big question, which one to get, but first, let's dive into the rumored specs for the PS5 Pro. 
Remember, these are just leaks and I can't guarantee their authenticity. So take it with a grain of salt. If these specs turn out to be true though, I'll be the first in line, eager to grab one. Don't blame me if they change, I'm just sharing the latest buzz. Let's see what they've possibly got in store for us. They're impressive. 8 Zen 4 cores clocked up to 4.2 GHz, 72 RDNA 3 compute units clocked up to 2.5 GHz, and 20 GB of GDDR6X unified memory. Not to mention a 1.65 terabytes PCIe Gen 4 SSD. What does this mean in layman's terms? We're talking about more than double the raw GPU power at 23 teraflops, plus a larger and faster memory pool. To put things in perspective, the current PS5 has 8 Zen 2 cores and 36 RDNA 2 compute units, delivering 10.28 teraflops. So the PS5 Pro, or Trinity as it's being called, is set to be a significant upgrade. The rumor mill also suggests that game developers will start receiving Trinity development kits in November 2023, with the console hitting the shelves in November 2024. The price tag, a cool $599 per £549, which, considering the significant boost in performance, seems like a steal. Now I know what you're thinking this sounds too good to be true. But remember, Sony pulled off a similar feat with the PS4 Pro, which had more than double the GPU horsepower of the original PS4. Alright folks, let's take so which one should you pick? Well, I'll let you make the final decision.